Good evening, everybody. This is Frank J. Bennett. I, like the rest of you, am still <coughs> operating under the COVID-19 restrictions. So I have to talk to you uh, here from my office in beautiful scenic Ohio, where all the fun is. I am the author of Encounter with the Aberdeen Wild Man, Encounter with the Aberdeen Wild Man, a true story, in which I detail my own personal encounters with strange and bizarre uh, beings and creatures from my youth. And among the things I encountered uh, were the topic of this week's discussion, UFOs. In my examination of the phenomenon of UFOs, um, I'm not completely convinced that these objects are actually physical objects. Uh, for all intent and purposes, we have rarely seen a physical manifestation manifest itself in a physical way. Um, all, the majority of all of the sightings thus far and encounters thus far could be easily attributed to paranormal phenomenon because they exhibit the exact same, exact same characteristics of many of the entities we have all witnessed in the paranormal field, entities that I myself have seen. They also exhibit the same characteristics. Now that should not be true if these are in fact advanced alien races from billions of light years away. This will lead me to another subject, which is kind of loosely related to the UFO phenomenon, and that's called transvection, which I also detail in the book. Transvection is where something, in this case someone, is transported from one place to another by supernatural means, supernatural forces. Jesus was transvected in the book of Luke, chapter 4, by none other than Satan himself. Now think about it for a second. If the most, uh, most high son of God, the creator of all things, if his son can be against his will transported from one place to another by what is without doubt the single most powerful demonic entity in existence, Satan, then why can't you, ordinary people, also be transvected by lesser entities? This is how I explain alien abduction, and my apologies to all of those out there who may be taking offense and who suffered through horrific situations regarding this. But you see, if you examine many, many of the alien abduction scenarios, and I have compared them against uh, many, many uh, at-home uh, hauntings and the abuses they carry out, I find a great deal of, a great deal of similarities. Remember that the spirits work to deceive. And just because they're showing a lot of bells and whistles does not necessarily mean they're not evil, advanced entities. Jesus said himself that there are different kinds of spirits. So why should we get so narrow in our thinking that a spirit should only manifest itself in a certain way? This is also how, through transvection, I explain the phenomenon of missing people many people missing from one place and magically seeming to appear miles away, uh, which is physically impossible. Transvection makes that possible. In my own personal experiences of witnessing UFOs, they are, uh, they are lacking detail. I myself had seen the strange objects in the sky, the light whistling they do. Many of them are silent lights that just simply move very quickly. One of them, like I said in the mid-70s, knocked me on my butt. And it happened so fast, I'm not even sure how it happened. All I know is, is that these operate beyond the realm of physical laws. Everything that lives must obey physical laws. Everything that is physical must obey physical laws. If you examine the bulk of the evidence out there, you yourself will notice that they do not seem to operate within physical laws. For example, to be able to manifest in, out of thin air and disappear again out of thin air, that is beyond the realm of physics, when no other forces can be applied, when no, no other explanations or factors can be applied to the situation. No object operating within the realm of physical laws has the ability to simply just vanish in front of you or appear in front of you. That is supernatural. That is a matter of the spirit. That is all I would like to talk about about that particular topic. I will leave you with this. Uh, dovetailing on what I was talking about last week when I was speaking about pandemics. 
Jesus also said in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, among the very signs of his near return, last week I mentioned the reason why the pandemic is a sign of his return is because it's a global event. It's something that is, is, is experienced worldwide. Coming soon, do we not, oh, um, excuse me, happening today, are not UFOs being experienced on a global scale? And are not reports of UFO activity and encounters being reported to us in real time from all four corners of the planet? This is yet another sign. Because Jesus goes on to say, after talking about pestilences such as this COVID-19, that there should be fearful sights and signs from heaven. This, my friends, this UFO activity is yet another sign. And anyone who does the research will notice that there has been a massive uptick in encounters and sightings just in the past few decades. In the decades to come, we know for a fact that there shall be a multiplied amount of activity because in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Thessalonians cha uh, chapter 2, excuse me, it says that he who letteth shall let until he who letteth is taken out of the way. That term letteth means restraint, and it's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what restricts and uh, inhibits spirit activity on the planet, good and evil. And once that is taken out of the way by the living God, then spirits, both good and evil, shall have free and unfettered access to the earth and all that dwell on it. That includes the spirits that we see in the sky and the strange and bizarre and even frightening things we see in the sky. It will truly be a time of hell on earth. My name's Frank J. Bennett. You folks take care. Until next time.